Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a little bit of an introduction to Zelda Link to the Past, tips and tricks, all the little things you may or may not want to know, and it may hopefully prove useful in your randomizer adventure. It could prove useful for regular runs too, but this is mainly aimed towards randomizers. Let's start with your inventory. You can imagine the inventory being like a book, if you press left or right, at the at right end of the screen I keep pressing right and I will land on the next line. And if I just keep pressing right I will scroll through the entirety of the inventory. If you press up or down at the edge of the screen you will actually just land on the other side of the area. So if you have gigantic gaps or really awkward menu setup just press left or right in order to eventually arrive at the desired item. Next up, let's talk about boots. Boots are nice and easy to just run on quickly, but one of their interesting features that a lot of people may not know is jumping down a ledge quickly. If you just hold down against a ledge, eventually your character will jump after a brief delay just waiting at the basically edge of the ledge. However, if you just press the A button very very briefly once you arrive at the ledge, you jump down significantly quicker instead of having to wait that little bit of time until you finally jump, where you don't press the button. This works uh, jumping towards the south, just kind of like here. It works towards jumping towards the west. It works towards jumping towards the east. And jumping towards north is actually a bit tricky. So here, if I ch try to do the same, as you can see, my little character tries to hold on to the ledge uh, towards the north for some reason. So in some instances it might be useful to just do the normal thing and just hold up. Don't try to press the A button, just be quick. However, if you want to be really efficient and quick, in order to still jump down the ledge quickly, you need to be facing sideways towards the ledge and then you basically press up left or up right uh, towards the ledge and then press the A button in order to quickly jump down. So this is how you can still jump down the ledge quickly, even if it's facing north. Next, let's start talking about walls you can bunk open. So there are some notable walls that instead of just placing a bomb, you can just dash and boom, they open up. So here in the escape sequence, there are those two walls. Most of the time you will only ever care about this wall here that you can open. Further up, there is this wall behind here on Sahas Rala that you can bunk open. And also, worth noting about the wall at Sahas Ramas, if you are generally too close to a wall and try to bonk it open, like I'm standing right next to the wall now, it will not actually open up. You need to stand a little bit away, just kind of aligning yourself with this pot here, will do the trick in order to open it up. Next up, we do have... In Palace of Darkness, these walls here, you can bonk open, just kind of to make that a little bit easier for you overall, instead of having to use bombs. And last but not least, in Turtle Rock, just past the fire bridge, you can bonk this wall open. Also that one on the right for that matter, but I'm not sure why you would want to go there. Next up, we have King's Tomb. King's Tomb opens by usually by just bonking into it. You can do this, or alternatively, you can hold out your sword, just press up against the king's tomb, and then briefly hit the run button, and boom, it opens up. So this is not just faster than bonking and then going inside, but also can save you a bonk counter. Alright, next, let's start talking about item dash. What is an item dash? Well, basically, the only thing you need to know is you press the run button and the item button at the exact same time. Can be a bit difficult to do, but when you do it, you will basically, based on the item, uh, use the item and dash at the same time. So this can have various effects. The most notable one is probably dashing and hammer at the same time allows you to hammer down those pegs really, really quickly. However, it is worth noting that if you actually do not have a sword, because you may not have picked one up yet, the hammer dash, or any other dash for that matter, will not work at all. You have to have a sword. Next up, there's a few other dashes that are kind of noteworthy. For example, the Cane of Burner dash. 
it actually grants you invulnerability as soon as it starts and it allows you to move a little bit faster earlier on. However, the invulnerability will not start immediately like it normally does when as soon as you hit the item button the normal way. It only starts once that little thing starts circling around you. So it can be a bit dangerous if you try to uh, cane dash while you are at low health. Just use the cane first normally. Another one that is extremely important is the hookshot dash. So, even though hookshot dashing doesn't really do a whole lot as it may seem that way, however, what actually hookshot dashing does, it brings you into a weird state where if you try to press the B button to swing your sword, it doesn't work anymore after you do a hookshot dash. And then when you walk up downstairs, suddenly you are running super fast, basically as if you were dashing the entire time but being in full control. The way you can cancel this is by briefly dashing again and then you have control over everything again. So, basically it's just hookshot dash in order to gain that spin speed. You probably want to do that where your hookshot doesn't extend like against one of those stairs. And there you go. Um, a minor trick that you can do is if you hold out your sword first and then you do that hookshot dash, you actually move down, up and down stairs a lot quicker than before. Next up, what is not necessarily an item from your inventory, but is extremely useful, is with the sword. If you have the sword, you can charge it up with, by holding the B button, release it, and well, that's just a stronger attack. Also, a weird thing, like with the hookshot dash, you can bring yourself into that spin speed, or hookshot speed as you want to call it, by releasing the spin and then just pressing the run button one frame after you release the spin. So basically, just slide your finger over the buttons, and you will immediately also have the spin speed as well. Next up, let's take the other cane, the cane of Samaria, and that one has a bit of a strange effect. So a lot of people they don't necessarily know, if you bonk into a cane of Samaria block, it will basically get footballed over to the other side. So that has an interesting effect, it can use, be used for some strategies, and the cane dash for, you do for the cane of Samaria block basically has that effect the fastest. Next up, a very minor one. If you powder a bush, it will become a bush that has a decent chance at having a fairy inside of it. But you can also do a powder dash in order to powder a lot of bushes at pretty much the exact same time. And that increases your chance at getting a fairy. Or, well, it speeds it up anyways. Next up, a bit of a different one. If you release the duck here with your flutes just the first time, uh, you will notice that you have a bit of a delay until you finally can call your duck body to transport you to any other place you want to. So right now, I'm going to make another save save real quick. And I'm trying to call the duck body as quick as possible. I just spam in the Y button, and finally the flute goes off and I can fly away. If you just spam the Y button and the run button at the same time, you can call your duck body a lot quicker. Also, it makes a weird sound. Also, if in case you fly to the weird, wrong location, you can call your duck body as quick as possible by just mashing A and Y at the same time, or if you miss your duck body as well, he will reappear a little bit faster, or at least as fast as possible. Next, now when you have the bug net, you can do a net dash, which has a bit of a weird effect. For example, if you bonk into a rock from above with the bug net, you will immediately get the chance to capture a fairy, if you have enough space. And last, and also kind of least, if you have a shovel and do a dash with the shovel, while it seems to dig up spots, it actually doesn't work until the very last dig, so doing a shovel dash is pointless unfortunately, even though it looks pretty awesome. Next up, boots also allow you to walk on water through a bit of a strange setup. I'm not entirely sure why this works, but if you basically move over to a hole, just kind of sidle around here, this works in mini Moldorm cave, and also it does work if you do the same thing in ice rod cave. Just move over to the hole uh, and just dash outside, 
and for some reason, as soon as you jump down a southward facing ledge, you will be walking on water. Why does that work? Not entirely sure. So it's worth noting, if you bonk, you will lose that, and if you don't have flippers, you will be stuck in place, so you need to be very careful about it. However, this can be extremely useful to quickly go to Hobo and check him, or even walk over to Zora. There's another version of this water walking glitch, how you can set it up. If you, there is a hole, and notably in the light world there's only really this one hole that kind of works, if you just kind of dash past it and bonk, you will have the same effect. So it's kind of worth noting that you have to bonk in order for this to work. You'll be, you'll be walking on water. So this can be useful to take a bit of a nice shortcut over here. However, in the dark world, this can be potentially useful to save you having to defeat Aghanim. So in Skullwoods here, you have other holes and same concept, you just kind of dash past it, bonk, and it's also worth noting you cannot walk past the right side. If you walk too close to the hole again, uh, you will cancel out that water walk. So for Skullwoods to this to be useful, you have to actually travel quite a bit. And if you're not sure whether you did get it or not, you can hold out your sword walking up and down the stair, and you can see you're walking significantly faster than usual. So, then we can just dash all the way to the right side and over basically to Catfish in order to jump into the water, just kind of through a southward facing ledge. It's also worth noting, even if you don't jump into water, as soon as you jump southwards anywhere, even if it's not into water, like if you jump on this ledge over here, it will cancel out the walk on water. Also, shout out to Evanitis and also GamerCal for the setups and also tricks that I learned from them. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we talk about bomb jumps and how boots also help a little bit with those as well. So, um, worth noting, in Tower of Hera here, we have two pixels, that is a really really small window, in order to set yourself up right and then bomb yourself across this gap. I just messed it up, I fly, I fly down two floors, it's really bad, you lose a lot of time, and just doing it the normal way the game intends you to is probably safer. However, if you have boots and you just kind of get close to this gap, then you dash to the left, you can bomb jump across a lot more easily. Your window is 5 or 6 pixels instead of just 2, so it boots make this significantly easier. However, ladies and gentlemen, I do have another setup for you. So, the only thing that you need to realize is, the fastest way to jump across here is always if you have boots and just use one bomb. But I do have another setup here. The way I set up my bomb jump here is by lining up links, basically his right ear, just like this, try to take note of it. And then, I set a bomb, line myself up with that wall on the left edge, and then I'm in perfect position to do another bomb jump right across the gap. So this makes this super easy. The only requirement you have is having enough health. This is significantly faster than doing this the standard way or even hookshotting across and falling down the gap the other way around. It is worth noting, I will not be covering more of Tower of Hera. I'm just going to be covering more bomb jumps and the dungeons later on in separate fashion. So. But it's also worth noting that you can speed up this little trick here a bit more by putting down a bomb, putting down the bomb here, and then trying to do this. But if you mess up, you just fly down straight up. So the easy way and the safe way is to just position yourself in a way and then line yourself up with that wall, and then you're in perfect position. A little bit faster, you could do it also as well by lining yourself up like this. Plant the bomb, plant the bomb over here, and then line yourself up. This is a little bit faster, most of the time it works, but I've fallen down like that way too often, and the entire point of the setup is that you don't need to worry about falling down at all. An alternative, slightly faster strategy if you're comfortable with it, is releasing your spin here, if you have a spin, plant the bomb, face up, plant the bomb, and that plants the bomb basically close enough that you will always get blown across the gap. 
Next up, in Paradox Cave, when you just come from checking those five chests up here, you want to usually bomb jump across here to the left side. So this is a bit of a little bit strange setup, because you want to be close enough down and close enough left. However, this is actually really easy if you know what you're doing. Basically, what you want to do for setting up this bomb jump here, you just go down a little bit, just kind of like this, this is fine. I don't need to worry about going down any further, and then you tap left. Tap left again, until you see basically Link automatically move back to the right, as in... Essentially, as long as I'm not low enough, I can just tap left and Link will not fall for some reason off this corner. So this is a really easy way to just set up this bomb jump, just set up your bomb... ...and boom, you get blown across the gap. Here's also a reverse bomb jump that I figured out. I'm not sure why you would ever be in position to do this, but you just set the bomb down like this, bonk, and you get blown backwards across. Once again, I have no clue why you would ever use that. Last but not least, for overworld bomb jumps, if you are here in this little cave, and you pick up the item, but you want to continue up to Death Mountain, like Tower of Hera, because you have the mirror, um, you can actually bomb jump across here. So this is a little bit of a strange one, because this gap is way too large to ordinarily bomb jump across. But if you basically look at this, I can move kind of into the wall here. And this is kind of the entire trick about it. Basically, you move straight down and you are far enough into the wall, so the game will basically give you enough ground to bump jump across. The way you want to line this up is just have the sword somewhere around that little thing here, up here. Where you're just like this, then you just walk down, without falling preferably. Plant the bomb, and you have actually a lot of leeway. You don't even need to get close to where I was to get in the danger of falling, and you're just across. Let's talk about all the little things. Here, if you walk up and down stairs, you will see that whenever I come down and just hold down, only down, Link basically has a little bit of a stumble. Like, he just comes up and down stairs, he stumbles a little bit and then you can finally move again. This is called stair lag. In order to avoid stair lag, you want to hold left or right for just a little bit and then you hold down. And if you do it properly, you can gain actually a decent amount of time whenever you do this. So if you see better runners uh, do this little wiggle at the end of a staircase, that is what they are doing. They are avoiding the stair lag. It's not that major, but it is worth noting. Also, worth noting, if the staircase is facing up, as in if you come from south to north, there is no stair lag. Next up, if you are safe in quitting in order to go back to the sanctuary, there is a tiny little time saver you can do in order to go a bit faster. Like, normally people just go up to the priest and talk to him in order to... Uh, recover health, and if you do that, use the mirror, just pr uh, go to menu, press left, and you're outside a little bit quicker. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about fake flippering. Fake flippers can be useful in order to get from place to place quicker, or also sequence breaking the logic for randomizing. So, the Bay Fair Flick resort is basically you go close enough to the edge of the screen without actually screen transitioning, jump in the water, and hold towards the screen in order to be able to get to the next screen and being basically in the water. However, danger, danger, danger! If you get hit in the randomizer, you're automatically going to get killed, so that's basically a reset back to the save point, or in the original game, you will get softlocked. So don't get hit during it, otherwise that will have bad consequences. There's easy setups for doing this. So for example, if you line yourself up with this wall here, at south of Lake Hylia, you can then just slash this bush, hold upright, and hold the sword, and boom, you have a super easy setup for fake flippers, instead of having to awkwardly try to position yourself next to the screen's position and constantly moving left and left and right. This also works by picking up the bush, and same concept, just hold upright as soon as you pick up the bush. Alternatively, if you, let's say, try to fake flipper in a different location to a different place, what you can do is you can set down a bomb and get damage boosted into the screen transition. As you can see, I got blasted to the left towards the screen transition on the left. But it didn't actually screen transition me, which is convenient because now I'm perfectly set up to do another fake flipper if I want to. You can also use enemy or damage boost like that for fake flippering, but that can be kind of a little bit tricky. So, 
There's another, a little bit of a more strange fake flipper setup that you can do backwards from Hobo here under the bridge, and that is probably one of the more used ones in Randomizer. So, the way this works is basically you want to go down here to Hobo, also worth noting that you can swim through shallow water if you have no flippers and fake flippering. Right here. And the way this works in order to get back is essentially if you just push yourself against this wall, you are going to be pretty far to the right here on this uh, edge over here and you would not actually make it to the screen transition. What you want to do is basically move a little bit down, just a tiny little bit, and you should make it to the screen transition. So this was already too far down. There we go. Now we just make it to the screen transition, back outside, and we are fake flippering backwards. Let's talk about key dashes. So, whenever you pick up a key in a dungeon and then you want to open the key door and you have boots, you just kind of want to run up to a door and open it, right? So, however, most of the time you will just kind of bonk into the door. The reason for that is you need to have a very special alignment uh, in order for this to work. So, what an alignment is, is basically you align yourself with the wall at the bottom or you align yourself with a pot here. Essentially, whenever you are perfectly aligned with any of the tiles or any of the walls, you will be able to properly key dash. And that means you can go and grab the key. I'm aligning with myself with the bottom here wall and then just dash up and I can just perfectly run into the door. It is worth noting that I start dashing here before I hold up. Otherwise, this is not going to work. You can also align yourself with this spot here if you really want to. Basically any kind of alignment with an object or with a wall, with anything like that, will enable you to key dash. Next up, we have a little bit of an obscure one. When you do not have any magic left at all, and you have the King of Sam Samaria and you have the Mushroom, then you are allowed to use one of the more obscure little tricks by Emptying your magic bar and then using the King of Samaria once more, you hear the diddy, and then as soon as you hear that diddy, it works in the original game and also randomizer, you switch over to the mushroom, and suddenly powder comes out. So you can use this to sequence break getting to the magic bat, or you can also powder anti fairies in dungeons or anything like that in order for you to be able to progress a little bit faster or safer. Let's talk about the mirror. The mirror usually allows you to go from light world to dark world, and that can be quite useful. For example, if you are intending to visit the village of outcasts after you just completed Skullwoods, it's actually faster to mirror from Skullwoods back into the light world and going over here back into the dark world instead of just backtracking through the dungeon. Very slightly faster, but it's worth noting. However, the mirror also has some other uses. For example, if you are in a dungeon-like area, and you hear when I'm trying to use the mirror, you hear the bang. For some reason, in the Japanese 1.0 version, which the randomizer is based on, if you push a block and then use the mirror, the block will just straight up disappear, and so will all the other blocks as well. So this can allow you to traverse quicker through various areas if you have the mirror. For example, for the dam, you don't have to open this chest, go back outside and then lower the water, or the other way around. You can just do all this in one go. Other places like these are... The Blind Hunt. So this is one of the least used ones, just kind of because it doesn't have that much of use, you have to pretty much press, uh, push all the locks anyways, but it speeds up the process of doing so ever so slightly. Next up, we have the Misery Meyer Shed. Just over here, you can push only the left side blocks by removing them with the mirror. Uh, most of the time, when you come to the Meyer Shed here, you want to mirror over to Checkerboard Cave anyways, so even menuing for the mirror is not a time loss at all. So you just only press those left blocks, open up those two chests, whatever they might contain, and then you will be able to move on. Then we have, well, as mentioned before, Checkerboard Cave. You can just move and remove those top blocks, grab whatever might be there, and then just run back outside. 
Next up, we do have the Paradox Cave. So it turns out, if you actually have a mirror, it's ever so slightly faster, even if you have to switch to the mirror, to just remove this block and then bomb it open, instead of going to the other entrance and falling down to this place here. Last but not least, you also have the cave over here. So, as you might be able to tell, I'm just going to be spamming the mirror while pushing those blocks, and that make, works this way very easily. There's another method of going through those blocks here, which is a little bit more tricky, but just using the mirror, you can very easily take a shortcut here. Next, let's talk about stun drops. So in the vanilla game, whenever you stun an enemy through the boomerang or the hookshot or anything like that, and then kill them, you always get a green rupee in the vanilla game. However, in randomizer, this is random. You can get a small magic pot, a large magic pot, a fairy, you can get one bomb, four bomb, eight drums, you can get five arrows, ten arrows, green rupee, blue rupee, red rupee. There's a variety of items you can get, even really useful ones like fairies or just hearts. And it is kind of important for you to just check those stun item drops once in a while whenever you have the opportunity, either with the boomerang or also the hookshot. Speaking of the hookshot, the hookshot is actually a really nice tool in order to move around in the overboard. And even if you have boots, hookshot is actually still very useful. You just hookshot to a stock to a rock and then the next one, and that allows you to move around really really fast and quickly. Well, if you don't miss that is, which is a bit tricky, but basically whenever you have a hookshot but you don't have boots, make sure to just select the hookshot and that allows you to move around that much quicker. If you hookshot something from about 7 tiles away, like here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 tiles in between Link and this rock over there. That means this is approximately the breakpoint where starting to dash is faster than hookshotting. But for anything less than this di distance here, hookshotting to this rock here is actually faster than running. Obviously if you dash a longer distance, dashing is better, but for a surprising amount of time, as I said, this approximately this distance, the hookshot is actually your tool of choice. Next up, there's also small tricks you can do with the hookshot. So as we already learned, those blocks, blocks while they are being pushed, they have kind of strange properties. For example, you can actually also just straight up hookshot through them while they are moving. So in order for you to basically get to the dam and then open up this chest here immediately without having to go back outside and inside again, you can essentially just push the block and then hookshot straight through it in order to get to the chest quicker and then move on. So this is just a minor time save here. A bit of a larger time save is actually when you are on Dark World Death Mountain and go up through the Super Bunny Cave. Um, if you go up through the Super Bunny Cave, you can actually essentially hookshot to those blocks over there. And as mentioned before, there's a little bit of a tricky way to get to the right here, because you can go to the left here upstairs and then drop down on the right, but that takes a while. What you can do here is you position yourself slightly to the left in order for the hookshot to hit this block here on the back side. And then you push this block up, and if you time your hookshot just right, you can actually eventually just move here to the right. It's a little bit tricky, it might be safer to take out the mirror in order to remove the block if you have the mirror, but this is a pretty nice way to do this. Speaking of Super Bunny Cave, why is it even called that? Well, in the rare situation, you have a hammer and titan smiths that allow you to enter the portal up on Turtle Rock here, but you do not have the moon portal yet. Well, you are still going to be in your bunny form in the dark world. In the bunny form, you can't do anything except for, well, mirroring back to the light world, and that's about it. However, the Super Bunny Cave is called Super Bunny Cave because you can actually get the two chests anyways. So, under special circumstances where you are a bunny and can get into weird states such as falling down a hole right here, as you can see that looks a bit strange, 
Now, all of a sudden, I have all my abilities that I have as a regular link. You don't see the sword swinging, but as you can see, thanks to the sword beam, it's actually there. I can actually dash, I can use other items too, and I can push, push blocks. So this is why this is called the Super Bunny Cave, because you can actually access those two chests without ha uh, the need of having a regular bunny. Uh, having regular access to it. Please don't let the super uh, with the moon pearl. So this is the sequence break. Also, it is worth noting, if you bonk anywhere, you're going to be back to being a regular bunny again, so don't bonk. There is one other application for Super Bunny, and that is a bit of an obscure one, but I guess it could happen once in a while. If you have the Titan Smiths and the Mirror, but you do not have the Moon Pearl yet, well, the Flute for that matter, to get over to Mr. Maya area, you can actually basically use the Mirror at the same frame you enter this door. So the way you do it is just use the Mirror and hold up at the same time, and if you did right, you will be able to use your, well, complete abilities inside the little Meyer shed. And as you can see, works, everything works, just kind of like normal, and you can access those chests basically early. And those kind of, well, may or may not be useful for that matter. The same rules apply, if you bonk, you will not be able to do anything anymore. The same goes for getting hit as a super money, so you just absolutely want to avoid those little thingies here too. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk next about the hula hand room. In the hula hand room, this is a secret room that you're not normally supposed to access. You can only access this if something didn't go as the de developers planned and you get sent to this room instead of any place else. There's 225 rupees in here, which is a nice amount in case you need some additional money for, let's say, going paying Sora. The way you can get into this is through a few means. The first and most, well, known one, I guess, is if you do not have flippers and jump down this ledge here. And you just do this over and over again until the screen is really weirdly uh, moved in a way, and the way you can check this, whether you already got it or not, is up here in the top left corner, you have these link rings here. Once you see the second dark ring here at the top of the screen, you know you will be able to jump into this hole and get into the hula hand room. So sometimes this doesn't quite work, and in order for you to reset this, you can just enter this cave here and immediately come back out. And now, let's see. Alrighty, the screen is moving up every time I jump into the water a bit more. Okay, now it's all rust there. There it is. Now, as soon as I jump into this hole here, I will be landing in the hula hand room, which is actually pretty convenient. So this is something you can only do if you do not have flippers. Alternatively, what you can do is if you have the power glove already, you can open up the backside to escape. And then, you just basically position yourself somewhere around here, place a bomb, and you get blasted into this hole. I'm not entirely sure why this works exactly, but most of the time you will, will land in the hula hand room instead of the escape settings. Except for now, I didn't, I guess. So, most of the time when you save and quit back to Sanctuary, you will be basically able to set it up properly this way. And then there is one more way to do this that I know of. So, the way basically the hula hand room works is you enter a falling hole without the game knowing where exactly you are by you offsetting the position just enough. So one other way you can do this is here, by entering the screen transition here southwards at the lowest possible pixel by running or dashing into it. You need the boots for this. So the easiest way to set it up is just use a bomb. And then you start dashing and then hold down in order to dash down into that screen transition this way around. That way your position will be basically offset enough that as soon as I'm going to be entering here, into this hole here, I will also be landing in the hula hand room. Very convenient.